Hey guys, welcome back. Another episode of the Revere Weekend Walkthrough. Hope you guys are having a good Memorial Day weekend and special shout out to all the veterans out there. It's uh, just me today and Alex is kind enough to join us again today. So thanks, Alex. Yeah, no problem. Glad to be glad to be here again. And with that, we'll take a look at the trend gauge um, market leaders. We have them in a bullish uptrend. Um, great action from leading stocks uh, from tons of different sectors. So that has the green arrow. Um, short term, all the indexes besides the Dow are trading above the short term 21 day moving average. Medium term, we have the green arrow as well, trading above the 50 day moving average. And then long term, green arrow as well, trading above the 200 day moving average. So with that, I'll dive into some index review. So I have Market Smith pulled up here and just starting with the S&P 500, um, great action overall. It broke out of this flat base, um, had that negative reversal on Friday, but held this previous all-time high level and put in a nice reversal on Friday. So as long as we're holding above this 5264 level, markets are acting well. NASDAQ, same thing, holding above those previous all-time highs and looks very constructive. Mid-caps, these got hit on Thursday pretty hard, um, but notice the volume was pretty light. So we held that 50-day moving average and, and rever reversed higher on Friday. Um, and overall, this chart looks constructive. It's just kind of building this base. Um, IWM, similar as uh, mid caps, held support at the 50-day, and it looks like it's forming uh, the right side of this handle. So overall, good action. And what we've been talking about, this is just a huge stage one base. So eventually this will break out and, you know, through this 200, 210, 211 level could lead to a nice move. Dow, this is the lagging index um, sitting right at the 50 day and uh, topped out at this 398 um, level and coincided with 40,000 on the Dow futures. VIX, um, exactly what we want to see. Um, continues to stay around this, you know, 11, 12 level and volatility is really drying up. So this is positive. When we're, when we're trend following and focused on uh, less volatile uptrends, this, this can be good. The dollar uh, trading below the 200 day moving average and um, just positive for equities if this can continue lower. Gold finally starting to pull back a little bit. You know, we had these huge run from you know from the commodity and gold related stocks so it makes sense for for this group to cool down a little bit and it's it's pulling back to this 50 day so could form another base before moving higher silver same thing kind of had a parabolic move the other week and now it's pulling back to the 10 EMA um, and a little consolidation around here and to form a new base would be constructive copper same thing um Harsh pullback and, you know, FCX, SCCO, those copper names pulled back pretty hard as well. Um, but, you know, similar to all these other commodities, they might just need a couple more weeks to form new bases and whatnot. Oil sitting right at the 200-day moving average. 10-year sitting right at the 50-day. Um, would like to see this lower. This would be positive for, for equities. And then Bitcoin looks really good. It's uh, put in a bullish reverse on Friday and it looks like it's forming the right side of this base and uh, could lead to a nice move. And the weekly looks great. Um, so yeah, so that's that's a look at the indexes. Looking at breath, um, got the NASDAQ McClellan summation index here. Overall, great action. This is trending to the upside and the best uh, trading environments often occur when this is trending to the upside. And then if we look at this chart with the NASDAQ composite, you can see um, when this is on a buy signal and trading above the 10 day moving average, usually the best uh, market environments occur. New highs, new lows. Um, you know, we're starting to get some negative readings, but partly due to the fact of that negative reversal on Thursday, but overall still positive breath in the market. And then one thing to note is uh, some a little negative divergences here with the percent of NASDAQ stocks above the 20, 50, 200 day moving average. You can see the 
the index made higher highs, but um, these are actually making lower highs. So something to keep a watch on. But, uh, you know, we know NVIDIA's the top stock in the market right now, and that could be skewing some of these numbers under the hood. And then this is a chart, the S&P 500 with uh, net new highs and lows. And as you can see, once the market started coming off here from the bottom, uh, we've had super positive uh, new high readings. And that's what you want to see in, a, in an uptrend. And then, so yeah, so that's breath. So we'll take a look at uh, at focus list for the week ahead. Um, you know, tons of great looking charts out there. So got 17 names I'll quickly walk through. MSTR with uh I showed that IBIT chart there um, and with Bitcoin being strong, MSTR tends to do well and this is coming right against this downtrend line. So this looks good. Coinbase as well, just recently closed above the 50 day moving average, you know, broke this descending wedge. Um, so this looks good, you know, through this little flat base and on the weekly, it retested that breakout spot and is falling through to the upside. Uh, Hood, this is another one. This is kind of a pick and shovels play for crypto, the meme stocks, and also they they're introducing a ton of new things, 24 hour right. trading. Um, and so yeah, so this is coming through this 20 level and is building kind of a nice cup and handle little base. Pims, this had that good news on the 17th and it gapped up on huge volume. Pulled back here to the 21 day. And now I'm watching it through this, you know, 17, 15 level. Sweet greens. I've talked about the uh the super strong momentum in restaurant stocks. And this is one of the leaders in that space. It uh had that huge gap up and now it's forming this uh, you know, power earnings gap continuation flag looks good. SMCI, we had that positive NVIDIA earnings. Um, so this. This one looks good. This one tends to move when chips get in gear. So I'm watching this one through the 50 day. Celsius, this had that strong move from 67 up to this 100 area. Now it's kind of pulling back and forming a little handle. Um, and if you look at the weekly, it looks good. Continues to make new highs. App Lovin, this had that uh, gap on volume. They had that, um, they had that huge, huge increase in earnings, as you can see. I mean, three straight quarters of triple digits. And this pulled back, but now it's setting up a pivot through, you know, this, uh, through this um, 85 level held to 21 days. So it's acting really well. Generac, this, uh, you know, this has kind of got a base on base pattern. I've talked about this in other episodes, but Pulled back to the top of the base and it's falling through. So this one looks good. And the weekly still looks great. UEC, um, been seeing some momentum in uranium stocks. Uh, and so this one's really bunched up here, right? You have like the, the 10, 21, and 50 day all stacked on top of each other. So this one looks good in that space. IBIT, talked about Bitcoin. MU, this one, I talked about this last week and how I was looking for a low volume pullback into this like 120 top of the base. And it did that pretty nicely. And now it's setting up for a breakout. Spotify getting super tight right under this previous high. Um, and these earning, earnings numbers are great. CCJ with the uranium theme, super strong chart. Um, held this previous breakout level after that um after that day right here and and looks good through those recent highs Nutanix this one's just been a monster stock really and now it's got a tight 4 day consolidation after breaking out Futu this is one of the china names finally starting to give an opportunity here sitting at the 21 day and you know had that big breakout through 65 and now it's had, um, you know, six, seven days pulling back on super light volume. And this reversal day had higher volume. So that's good. And then Reddit, this is kind of a IPO base um, pulled back to the 21 day. So it could still carve out in this uh, IPO base. So overall, it looks really good. Um, and then if you want to pause it, 
This is after scanning from the weekend. These are some of the leading stocks and the leading themes that I'm seeing. Um, so yeah, if you want to pause this, go through those names. I think this is a great list. So yeah, that's uh, some focusless stocks. Alex, do you want to dive into what you want to talk about today? Yeah, sure. Um, first, I that was great. I mean, if I, I had a full-time job and I didn't have the time to go through charts and stuff, I would, I mean, this is like a layup for a lot of hours of work for the folks that don't do this for a full time like we do. So props to you guys for having a free service like this, uh, educational and uh, informative. So thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, last I, week, I, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, I go through it in about a couple minutes, but it takes hours to, to find all the stocks. Yeah. We don't just, fi- these don't just fall in our lap. Um, <laughs> it's an art form and it takes, uh, a lot of discipline and focus, uh, especially on the off hours of the market. Like we don't do this work during market hours. It's usually already done. So, right. um, yeah. So last week, uh, if uh, you guys are watching, saw the market uh, was pretty volatile around the NVIDIA earnings. Thursday was an odd day. NVIDIA was up, but a lot of the growth stocks got whacked and into the close. We sold off kind of hard and it looked like we may have, we're having a short term, uh, short-term top being put in um it it was it was ugly uh so that thursday in the in the first half of the day was looking good and i bought some crowd uh some crowd strike calls uh the 350s i think they were the july and they weren't really doing much but then into the close we started to sell off and then i don't like going into the next day with more than a 10 to 15% loss on my option contract. And uh, so I had to, I had to sell them. I, I stopped out, but it doesn't mean I can't get back in. So this is the key to options. Like just because something doesn't work one day, doesn't mean you can't get back in. You don't have to go looking for another name. Just keep watching that name. And I've been having my eye on CrowdStrike because it's got a nice long base. So the next mm-hmm. day I decided to go with a 340 strikes uh, in the morning, it ended up working out pretty well. Uh, CrowdStrike closed like another 10 points higher. So I have some cushion to hold over to the weekend. So I held them. And um, by the way, this isn't investment advice. This is just uh, what I'm doing. I yeah. am not an advisor. So I'm just a consultant and help out with educational stuff and what I'm looking at as far as stocks and options. Um, uh, if you could pull up the weekly on CrowdStrike, I want to point something yeah. out. That looks like a big, big, like a huge cup and handle, like a high handle. Yep, exactly. Now, if you go way to the left, draw that little cup on the way left when it first top yo Oh, right keep, here? Yep. No, I keep going back. That that cup right there. Yep. Okay. And then you see how um, around 110, it went sideways around in like 20, July 2020. Yeah, right here. To the right. Yeah, there's that. See, yeah, right there. Now that went from 110 to 220. So it, it doubled. It went on a 100% gain. Now the measured move on this is probably a lot, is a lot larger. Look how much bigger the cup is. And the earnings expansion has is, is exploding. And, you know, they, their projections are really good. Uh, the sales are booming. This is the number one name as far as, in my opinion, on computer software security. This is the name. So if you're looking at it in a big picture, th- I think this thing has a lot more room to the upside. And then um, even like, I'll just bring up this monthly. And I mean, it's really, yeah. it, you, it's not extended at all, right? Like it just cleared those 300 level highs. Exactly. And you know, the old saying, what seems too high usually goes higher. Yeah. Um, and I've seen it before. I'm like, oh man, I missed it. And then I come back to that stock two months later. And I'm like, I didn't miss anything. That stock kept going up and it just kept driving higher week by week. Uh, if you could pull the daily back up on this, I want to point one more thing up on the chart. It's kind of caught my eye on the bottom, right? You see how the red days, the red bars on the down days were really light. Yeah. Um, and then every day that it's gone up, has been larger than the red bars, which tells me that it's been accumulated by institutions. 
I, I, I really like the look of this. It's not a lock. Nothing's a lock, but this is one of the focus names that I have. Uh, another name that I was I bought some calls on last week was uh, MU. And right now I'm kind of sitting very little up. Like I just got into this, but I like the, the look of this one too. Um, it's got a nice little base and the moving averages are sloping up. And that left, after that gap day, that, that thing was being accumulated. So now you got institutions behind you. Typically when that happens, uh, the down days get absorbed. So it helps your odds uh, on a grind higher. Um, and like last week, what I just, you know, talked about, I usually go for a couple months out, give myself some time. And I'm usually in the, you know, the option for a week or two at most and catch the explosive move off the rip. So, you know, my guess is this is probably going to go higher as long as the market stays intact. That's the most important part, obviously, like you talked about the, you know, the indices are trending higher. So if you have a leader, I do think this is one of the leaders um, that should give you an edge that the stock does go higher. And then so. looking at the monthly, I just pulled up. I mean, now this looks like a huge 20 year cup and handle as well. Yeah, That's funny. Yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even look at that. That's true. It's, it's price has been below this a hundred level since, you know, since it topped in 2000 and it's finally just clearing that. And, and we've seen is when a stock bases for this many years, it can lead to a huge move. And I'll just pull up GoDaddy as an example. I mean, this spent 10 years below um, 90 bucks and look what happened when it finally broke out. Yeah. That was a big move. Really huge move. Um, yeah, and something to point out about that, all these stocks that we're talking about are at new highs. So the everyday investor, I used to think like this too. Well, why don't you just buy it when it's at a low? Because you don't know how much lower it's going to go. Yeah. And you usually have an overhead. And what is overhead? People are like, what does that even mean? So let's say people already own the stock and the stock starts, stock starts coming back and you come to break even. Typically, people will sell it and even institutions and funds will end up selling it just to get out of it. So that causes some churning and the stock can come back down. Now, what happens, Connor, when a stock hits new highs? And yeah. everyone's everyone's in the green, right? Yep. Everyone's I'm, making money. Uh, so there's not going to be that person or fund that's like, oh, I have to get out. I need to get at a, a small loss or I need to, I, I'm got back to even. I want to get out. You're not going to have that. So when a stock hits new highs, it's like the path of least resistance. I've, I, everyone's heard that. Yeah. And typically it continues to go higher. That's why we try to get into the, the high price stocks, the ones that are at new highs. Because to get a 100% gain or 200, you first have to get a 50% gain. You're not going from like a red minus 50% loss to a 200% gain. That, that's not how it works. You have to be in the green first to make money. So... That's something I just wanted to point out is that the, the stocks that we're looking at are breaking out. Yeah. And every big winner makes continually makes new highs. That's that's the only way a stock can go up in price in the long run. So that yep. trying to bottom fish is just, I mean, we can just pull up art. Every time this has tried to rally, it's mm -hmm. got projected. And why is because all the people that bought up here, anytime it gets up there, they're selling into. And this is a perfect example of, you know, overhead supply in play, right? Because yeah, yep. if you have a hundred cost basis and it gets up here, you want to at least get out while you can. Um, and it's going to have a much harder time going up versus, you know, look at SMCI. It, it broke out to all time highs above 357. And look how much higher it went, right? Um, yeah. So exactly, uh, it's it's a very simple thing, but a lot of people overlook it and and still try to bottom fish. Well, it's an emotional thing too, right? They you're battling yourself when you're trading, and it doesn't feel good to try to buy at a new high because you feel like you missed it. But then you're you're tricking yourself when you're trying to buy at a dip because you're like, oh, I'm getting a discount. I'm getting in at the low you're just you're going to be fighting the market and you're going to be fighting institutions that you know try to try to trail them and uh it makes it makes trading a little bit easier um the last thing i want to point out too i think i talked about this last week 
um, when you're picking stocks, you know, some stocks may look good, but they may not be right for options trading, whether it's selling puts, buying calls, selling calls. It, it doesn't matter because they don't have the liquidity or the tight spreads that you need. For example, I was looking at Celsius. I own that stock, but I don't have options in it because the spreads are like 15 to 20 cents. So as soon as you buy it, you're already losing. And yeah. it doesn't have the open interest that you need, the volume. It's just not tight. It's not the right stock. And there's plenty of other stocks that you can get into, like a crowd or MU that have a lot more volume on the options, a lot tighter spreads, easier to get in and out of. You know, you don't want to go to battle with just a sword. You need your shield too. So uh, make it easier and find the right stocks when you're trading options. Yeah. And with options, you're already fighting, you know, time premium. So if you're dealing with a liquid options and you're, you're not doing yourself a favor, right? Yeah, no, you'll get, you'll get blasted. And I've been there and that's what I'm trying to share is the mistakes I made. Hopefully the viewers don't make the same mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much it, man. That's all I'm looking at right now. Awesome. So we'll just look at earnings real quick. Um, you know, Kava after the close Tuesday, which I'm watching, we have um, Pure Storage, Nutanix, um, Dell, so Mar Marvell, so another big week if you guys want to pause this so you know, always know your earnings dates and, you know, if you own a stock that could move with something that should, that should always be known and prepared as well. And then looking at the economic calendar, Tuesday, we have consumer confidence. Um, Wednesday, some Fed speakers. Thursday, initial, initial jobless claims with uh, retail inventories. And then Friday, uh, personal income. So another busy week of that. Um, and yes, Alex, anything else? No, I mean, even if you're not trading the option, the stock going into earnings, obviously it's a huge risk. I, I, I don't... Uh think that's a good idea for someone new to try to gamble on options. That's literally gambling. Might as well go to the casino. Don't do that. It's going to reinforce bad behavior and it's not worth the risk, but and options can be useful to kind of gauge how big the move is going to be. So the implied move like Nvidia had, a, I think it was a kind of, if I'm not mistaken, a $78 implied move. Yeah. Uh, into that. And I think it closed that's up 78 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, at yeah. like 1028. Yeah. It's it it's kind of wild how they the options market and those market makers know the implied move. It's it's wild. And you can find that uh, on a lot of websites. Like Thinkorswim has a really good platform where if you open up the options table, you'll see it at the top, the implied move plus or minus, let's say 78, like it had. Yeah. Um, and it's just a good gauge to you know what to expect percentage wise on the move up or down. So that that's pretty much another tool that uh, you can, you guys can use. Yeah. And it's a good way to like manage your risk, right? Like if you have the implied and, and you want to, um, you know, say if the stock made a double implied move, which is rare, but it can happen. You want to know what's your worst case, what's your worst case loss. Um, because even stocks can make three times implied moves. Um, it doesn't happen often, but you need to be prepared for that scenario because it can happen. Yeah, you're right. And uh, with uh, especially with options, I've I've held in earnings before and I, I try to make a new rule. Like if I don't have over 100% gain on my option, I don't want to give it back. So I, I'll i hold it with 100% gain, but anything less, even a 50% gain, I, I take it down. Because you can, the next day, if it goes down, you could lose all of it and more. Yeah. Like that, you need a huge cushion for options, but stocks a little different. You know, you can, I don't know what you think about this kind of, but I would say like what, 20% gain or so to be able to hold an earnings. Yeah. Typically. At least, at least the full um, implied move. And with Revere, right. We, we, we created a calculator so we can, we put in what double the implied move is. And let's say, you know, what, our max risk on the total portfolio is it's always going to be, you know, less than 50 basis points. And then with the current gain, it can tell us the size that we'd be able to hold into earnings. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you have a cushion that's at least over, um, over the implied move, then, you know, it's not gambling at all there. Yeah. You're, you, you can take the hit if it, if it works against you and it won't, 
they won't destroy your portfolio and only take a little paper cut. And, you know, you have your other stocks too that are working. So sometimes it could end up being okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, yep. Well, thanks, Alex. Appreciate that segment. And um, yeah, that's that's it for the- Thanks review. for having me on. Yeah, of course. That's it for the Revere walkthrough. Um, hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend. Um, if you guys would like to reach out, you can find me on Twitter or email me at connor at revereasset.com. And um, yeah, good luck trading this week and have a good rest of your weekend. All right, guys. See you later.